Hello, everyone. Today we will begin the devotion by reading together responsibly Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God that God may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out with wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has God's steadfast love ceased forever? Are promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has anger shut up all compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and the muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh Lord, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O oh God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. The theme for our devotion today is the path of faith that steps out to witness to the power of truth over lies. This witness sometimes leads to suffering. So we remember today and commemorate St. Polycarp, who was Bishop of Smyrna. And he was martyred for his faith and lived in the years 69 to 90 to 155. So he became an old man before he was martyred. And he was revered by early Christian communities who were finding their way in several different cultural regions. His life and the stories he could tell stretched back to the days of the apostles. So he was a living link with the earliest followers of Jesus. We know so very little about him except for his martyrdom when he was an old man and that he was so much revered as an elder by other Christians like Ignatius. His personal demeanor and actions showed a path towards unity in times when the early church had begun to fracture and divide over their differing practices. The one story that appears in any search you may do on Polycarp one story that lasted because it tells how he maintained fellowship between the Eastern Greek church and the Western Roman church over the celebration of Easter. Polycarp, who was in the Greek sphere as Bishop of Smyrna, which is in Izmir today, not far from Ephesus, where John the Apostle lived. Polycarp agreed with John the Apostle that Easter should be celebrated on Pastor, Passover, no matter which day of the week it fell on. While Christians in the West followed the tradition of 14 Nisan, the first Sunday after the full moon, after the vernal equinox. But Polycarp, in a famous meeting with Anxites in Rome, after discussing the region, for their differing practices, did not break fellowship over these different ideas about Easter, 
and communed together. Sometimes we can have differences with other Christians, but we do not break fellowship over that. And that is the lesson from Polycarp. Our scripture text today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. The letter writer says, finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing for those who desire life and desire to see good days. Let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence and keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Here ends this reading. This letter is dated between the years 60 and 90 by the scholars who examined how Rome was portrayed and pinpointed these years because of the way that persecutions were described. Christians even today know that they might be persecuted in little ways by feeling the contempt of others or in some places even overt violence. Christian discipleship has always come with a risk either to social standing or even physical um, life. Given that reality, the writer says that the unity of spirit should prevail among Christians, that we should show sympathy and love for each other have tender minds and a humble mind. There is very good advice for the kind of polarization we live with today. To share in the difficulties that persons of faith have experienced, we enter ourselves into personal fasting and repentance during the Lenten days. And through focusing on what we need to shed from our lives, and what we need to gain from contemplation of the suffer suffering of others. We can join now our personal journeys with the community of Christians who are emptying themselves for others. That communion of a pilgrimage of the spirit can lead us out of personal isolation into a stronger witness. When we think about others, we are not alone. And whatever path you take, if you follow Christ, you will have company. First Peter's letter quotes from one of the Psalms, number 34, to give a warning against evil speech. Because we all know that telling lies is what breaks communities apart. One of the oldest lies that we struggle with today is the lie that separates people by how they look. A lie that gives imagined and real power to some and invisibility and disrespect to others. To remember the counsel to guard our tongues so that we counter this lie, 
we will need the power of God with us. The psalm says, the eyes of God are on the righteous and God's ears are open to prayers. God's face, which is God's blessing, God's face turns away from those who do evil. Christ has made us whole in God's presence and there are no lies we could say about others that would ever stand before God. Our respect for truth will instead define God's reality. Some of those telling lies have a false God and say things that they think their followers want to hear. But this is only for a day and not for the time that God gives. Our discipleship is not the discipleship of popular opinion or of cultural wars or of lifestyle choices or of labels. The problems of facing the truth have challenged Christianity before. And courage is always rare, but believers have found it before. Do not fear what they fear or pay people back with their own medicine. That is the advice the letter writer gives us. Keep your conscience clear. Find out more about what is unfamiliar to you. Make a move to living into God's abundant world of welcome where everyone has a home, where we see God's face. Following that true path is the goal of our discipleship, this Lent. And now let us pray. Gracious God, in every age you have sent men and women who have given their lives in witness to your love and truth. Inspire us with the memory of Polycarp, whose faithfulness led to the way of the cross and give us courage to bear full witness with our lives to the truth of God's love for all people so that the lies that belittle others might finally give way in the power of your son's victory over the forces of sin and death. Amen. This devotion will close with the singing of the first, fifth, and sixth stanzas of the hymn, My Song is Love Unknown, found in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship, number 343.